I want to share something I was pondering on last week and um, maybe I'll find time this year at our pneumatic service to teach on it because this year God is lifting us to higher dimensions in the spirit 2024 is a very spiritual year are you here is a very spiritual year you will notice for those of you who are in tune with God that there is a lot of um, demands of priesthood and consecration on the lives of believers there is a general calling to the place of prayer it looks like God is making us get conscious more conscious about spirituality and it's because of the things that God is about to unfold in this year that he has already started actually God is in the, in the business of raising an army in this end time he's raising generals and for every season there are those whom he will send to represent him represent his kingdom and to manifest his glory and I want you to know that as you walk with God God's intention is not just to leave you where you are no there is a mandate on your life that you don't know it now means it has not been revealed doesn't mean it doesn't exist there is something peculiar about you that God wants to be revealed and he has allocated time for it and so you will do yourself a favor to value your relationship with God and to understand give your heart to understand God's timings for your life it's one of the things that is missing in the body of Christ a lot of believers don't understand divine timings the Bible says to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose do you believe you have a divine purpose that means there is a time for the manifestation of that purpose the time for the manifestation of that purpose is not the time for the gestation of the purpose gestation comes before manifestation so what you will manifest will be based on what you have conceived and allowed to go through a period of gestation in your work with God and you know those seasons of your work with God will be quiet will be quiet you may not really understand many things those are the moments where you will need to follow your heart to where God is taking you to it is in the season of manifestation you will now realize why I had to suffer this this was not a suffering it was a training why I had to go through this place the Bible says of, of Jesus in John chapter 4 that he must needs go through Samaria he was going somewhere else but he had to pass through Samaria and you will think that all that God wanted him to do was to talk to one woman at the well but through that one woman salvation came to Samaria and the entire gentile world during the time of jesus so understanding god's timings for you are very very relevant to your fulfillment of his divine purpose and that is why we must pay attention to the things that god is doing with us this year especially spiritually now last week i was meditating on something you know in the body of christ god has several graces several expressions of his glory of his might of his wisdom of his power just when you think you have seen an anointed person and then there's a wave another wave in the body of Christ and God begins to show you terrible people some of them faceless people where are these ones coming from a few days ago we we're watching a lady at my house with the ministers strange prophetic anointing i had to call somebody and say I, I want to talk to that lady i want to talk to her so just when you think you have seen all no there is more to be revealed there is more to be revealed there are people god has equipped in fact there are men that work as divine institutions on the earth they in themselves are institutions it means when you stretch them their lives can be fragmented in such a way that each fragment becomes a curriculum to disciple the body of Christ so you can look at the life of a man and his life will take you through a school of divine wisdom these are the kind of people God is raising in the last days and when you become serious with God you too will find yourself around 
these kinds of people but you see the bible says in first corinthians 13 that no matter how much we know no matter how much we prophesy no matter how anointed we are the bible says we we'll only know in part so no matter the grace you have seen it is yet not the best of god in that dimension if for instance you've met a prophet who is very terrible in you know operating revelational gifts of the spirit to the best of his ability to the summit of his manifestation that is not the full scope of that dimension of god and i was asking god a question how then can we experience your fullness if what we are seeing and we are marveled with is only a part john 1 16 says of his fullness have we received and grace for grace so every level of grace we experience is targeted towards building us to the point where we can experience the fullness of god the prophetic is not the fullness of god it's part of god no matter how anointed an apostle is it's just a dimension there is a place god wants us to get to and the bible describes it in ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man where all of this fullness are absorbed and harnessed in us that means that god wants you both with what he has engraced you with he wants you to be able to drink from several channels of his divine wisdom and glory in such a way that you will become a manifestation of each of these to a point where the bible says you become like a perfect man christ in his fullness is represented in your life that's when you become a wonder truly so i've been asking god how do we get to the fullness in manifesting the anointing how do we get to the fullness in manifesting your power what do we need to do to rise to that point where the whole world will see you in and through us how do we fulfill the scripture that says that to the intent that the manifold wisdom of god the word manifold is many-sided or multi-dimensional you know it's already complex that means the wisdom of god which is a mystery is complex the bible says we are the ones that will teach principalities and powers that wisdom these are spirit beings that were created long before the earth was created you don't measure them according to millions of years you measure them according to light years so i asked the lord how do we experience the fullness and god took me to ephesians chapter 3 in verse 14 to 16 i think let's read from verse 16 that he would grant you according to the, his, the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Go on. We're reading down to verse 19. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. He said then, go back. Then when Christ has dwelled in your heart through faith, that you will be rooted and grounded in love yes please and may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length these are dimensions and depth and height in other words to know the love of christ which passes knowledge he says then you will be filled with all the fullness of god so if you want to see god in his fullness then you need to look for believers who have allowed themselves to be grounded in the love of christ the bible says this love is something that passes knowledge it's something you are immersed in it says when you are immersed in this love you will experience the fullness of god that means the greatest manifestation of any grace god gives you is when it is operated from a life that has fully understood and is absorbed in the love of god without love whatever you have makes no meaning before god 
the weight of our gifts our graces before god in the spirit is the is based on the content of divine love expressed through it so if i'm moving in the prophetic and my intention is just so that people will know oh here is this great man of god god is raising i may be marvelous before human beings but where spirits and immortals are there is no weight in what i'm doing And you know that's that's the principle that magic operates with magic is an illusion just to trick you that something is happening meanwhile there's there's a vacuum and god began to tell me son if you really want to experience the fullness of all of christ that i've i have caused to dwell in you through the holy spirit then you need to understand and walk in my love this love is in three dimensions first of all it is love it is the love of god secondly it is the love for god then thirdly it is the love for one another for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever if you are a businessman when you give your one and only you want to ensure that there is a return on investment but God says that whosoever that's the love of God in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 I believe in verse 14 and 15 it, it, it tries to explain further this love of God and its effect on us as new creations it says for the love of Christ compels us ha have you been compelled by God, by the love of God in you, to do something before? Your service in the house of God, is it compelled by the love of God? If it is, you don't need a supervisor. If it is, you don't need, you don't need anyone to teach you sacrifice. If you have understood the love of God, sacrifice becomes your life by default. By default. You won't fake it. There's something within compelling you. You, don't, you are not doing it for affirmation. You do it because there is a drive inside of you. The Bible says the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer, should, no, should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again these two scriptures explains the love of god and the love for god verse 14 explains the love of god that one died for all verse 15 now explains the love for god that those that he died for should no longer live for themselves but should live for him and so paul will tell you in romans chapter 12 verse 1 that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god which is your reasonable if you will do anything if since you are talking about making sense if you want to make sense before god then your entire life must be lived out as a sacrifice this is not only this is not only this that is an altar no you can grow from building an altar to even becoming an altar yourself when you have understood the love of god it will invariably respond through you as the love for god you will no longer follow god because christianity is our religion in our family no there is a personal conviction you have there's an experience you've had with that love that love will compel you to go any length for god that love will compel you to even lose human relationships was jesus crazy when he said any man that must follow me must deny himself of his father and his mother now look at how many attachments a lot of believers have and they think they can carry those attachments and baggages of relationship and still please god no jesus told them he said don't think i came to bring peace he said i came with a sword not that he came so that we'll be fighting ourselves no but that your loyalty and your response to his love for you sometimes will compel you to part ways with some human relationships it will compel you to give up some things it can compel you to give up a job for him 
and you trust him to provide for you and even though what he's providing is not better than what you were enjoying when you were there but this little that the righteous have is better than the fatted calf of the wicked the bible says of moses choosing rather to suffer affliction with the children of israel than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin he would have remained in the palace and said well what do i care i'm a, a prince an upcoming pharaoh of egypt they can suffer and remain there but he stripped himself and you just see how that god uses people's life to tell a story about himself just the way god is using your life to tell a story but your obedience is what determines if that story is in progress or not at this point in my life i don't know i still need a praise from god so that i can improve but everything you see me do and who i am today is propelled by one thing my love for god that's why i don't need supervision to serve god to give to god to be stretched for god to suffer for god i don't need supervision when when your actions are motivated by love then they are genuine and pure it is your love for god that now gives birth to your love for people jesus said in john 13 34 by this shall all men know that you are my disciple if you have love one for another he didn't say if you speak in tongues no believers speak in tongues disciples love Believer is just that's the first stage. Say that you are my disciples. That means there are many people who believe who are not disciples of Jesus. So the reason why you spend time in the presence of God, the reason why you have a secret place is not to come out and prove a point, is because you have a love for the one who saved you. That love is what will extend to others. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, John was still talking about that love. And here is what he says. And in fact, my main focus is verse 18, but let me read down from 16. He says, By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But who's, whoever has this world, this world's goods, and sees his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, he says how does the love of god abide in him say my little children let us not love in word or in tongue but in deed and in truth when you truly practice love for god it will overflow to people it's as simple as that if you can go any length for god there is nothing you can do to help a brother and this is one thing that is missing in the body of christ that's why you see a lot of fighting and strife and contention everywhere and i believe there is a generation in the body of christ that god is raising that will bring back the simplicity of the gospel which is the love of god the bible says that will give us that ephesians 3 again verse 18 it says that we we together with the saints that means you can't isolate yourself from the love of corporate fellowship may be able to comprehend with all the saints that means if you stay away because you have been hurt because you have been offended because you were gossiped because you were talked against if you stay away you can't experience the revelation that comes in this scripture he said it is with the same that means there are dimensions of god that will not be revealed to you except you are under a community of the believers there is something a corporate atmosphere does there are things that your prayer cannot generate pray from now to 20 to 20 30 or what there are things it can't generate i tell you the truth as we are seated here now dimensions are colliding together graces that every one of us has contacted but the reason why it's not manifesting is because we have not tuned our consciousness that I'm not just sitting down with so-so person. I'm sitting down with a representative of Jesus. You know, the manifestation of the Spirit is always based on consciousness. If we switch of God will break out here. And another reason is because we are yet to understand what true love is. 
why will i be angry with somebody that god has called and given what looks like a lucrative calling do you know paul puts it this way in first corinthians he said don't you know that the parts that are not seen are the ones that are doing the greater job not every one of us are called to be a face glory to god we are celebrating me today I, I can imagine some of us who say ah i wish i was the one you don't know the pain it takes to stand in this position as a matter of fact there was nothing special about today for me my routine went as normal everything i would do normal thing i didn't sit down and just stayed with my phone all day and i'm replying there's no time i, I wish i could do that but there's no time so if you wish for this i hope you are ready for the price and god will not tell you the price until you have entered my spiritual father said god will tell you you have to follow this path he won't tell you the slap you will collect there how you you'll have to die to yourself to love people for god to use you to influence people if you don't have love people cannot gather around you so many times you have to die to yourself you have to deny yourself of many things again and again and then you just keep praying that one day god will allow me to face myself not knowing that is a lifetime of sacrifice so there will never be a day where god will say okay now nah, it's just you yourself and i know your life is for people stephen when they were stoning him he said lord do not charge them with this sin The first Sunday when I was talking about the, the instrument we were to raise, right there, the Holy Spirit said, buy the camera. I said, yes, Lord. Before we even talk, before we think about it, yes, Lord. They calculated it. How much is everything? One point something million. I said, no problem. By telling me to do it, he just, he just trusted me. He just told me, I trust you. Every time God gives you an instruction, he's registering in your mind. That you have come to a point where he has trusted you with something but most of the times we hold back you want to see god move in your life freely beyond fasting and praying the bible says eyes have not seen nor ears heard neither has it entered into anyone the heart of any man the things that god has prepared not for those who pray to him not for those who give to him not for those who run around for his sake not for those who even give themselves to be killed for him paul said if i even though i give myself to be born and have not love it profits me nothing he said for those who love him at the end of the day let that be the giddle around your christian experience that i love god your consecration should be tied to your love for god it was because joseph loved god that he didn't take the offer from potiphar's wife it was not because how would papa look at me no you know many many christians the reason why they keep rising and falling is because their christianity is based on people's affirmation how i am seen in the eyes of people there's no power in that that's not the gospel when it comes from genuine love even when you are alone and nobody's there you stay to your consecration because you have love for god if God tells me this night, leave Meduguri, I'm telling you, come to my house. Everything except my clothes will be there. Everything, air conditions, TV, everything, everything I have, I have lost the attachment to them. Everything. That's the reason why my own style, don't follow me until you know the kind of love I, I know. My own style is before I buy anything for myself, I buy it for God first so there is no attachment you know last year in december satan came and tempted me and said what if somebody gives you a car as a birthday gift you go still give god and then for like two weeks i say ah now i need a cow but in my retreat at the end of the year i say god i don't care the car the first car goes to you i will not even enter it i will stand and look at it and pray for the people or the person and send i've already mapped out the person is going to is mapped then we'll fill the tank and put somebody to drive we have good drivers here it's love oh. it's love 
so when you see god anoints a man when you see god takes a man with his frailties as a human being and forces the generation of that man to hear him it's not really because of anything it's a covenant of love that's where i want us to get to can you rise on your feet i want to pray for you now now i'll give you one more minute whatever it is that you desire under this atmosphere i want you to ask the lord for it lift your voice and pray whatever it is that you desire whatever it is that you are trusting him for lift your voice pray pray the meeting has changed all the celebration is over now is the time to receive lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray it says he that oh have you not asked ask and receive that your joy may be full it says and whatsoever you ask the father in my name i will do it for you that the father may be glorified ask him ask him ask him ask him ask him ask him pray come on lift your voice pray 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 ask in jesus name now before i pray for us many of us i'm, I'm already in the spirit now there is a restraint in the heart of many of us some of you this restraint is blocking your ability to receive some of you are feeling unworthy all right so i want you to know that the love of god has made you worthy he exemplified that love when he died on the cross for you and the bible says if he did not spare his son but gave him for your sake how much more shall he not with him freely give us all things so those people that have hindrances of i'm not worthy take it off the mercy and the love of god qualifies you see god does not look for human accolades to qualify a man god has his own system of qualifying men he said i will have mercy on whom i will have mercy on and in psalms 103 he says as a father pities his children so the lord pities those that fear him For some of us it's just faith we need to be open for some of you you need to believe that god is about to give you this thing you desire you thought it would come through 70 days fasting no don't go that way oh. we used to go that way then don't go there you can't force god to do certain things but when you come by the protocol of his love that he's your father and he will give you just because he loves you and that's enough reason to receive from him is more than enough it's more than enough that's why i told you that i ate yesterday i'm not saying that you if you are going for a meeting go and eat oh no you don't understand me and god i told god i said god you know physically i need strength to stand and minister but i know that it's not about me it's about you the life of the christian faith is the life that is powered by the resurrection of jesus how did jesus christ resurrect from the dead it was the holy spirit that came and resurrected his body it was not him himself that means that if i must live as a christian it is christ that lives in me for i have been crucified with christ so when i stand on any stage i don't care who you are seeing the jonathan you know has died i didn't come there as jonathan no it's not about me it's him at work through me are you ready to receive now one more minute i want you to pray and specifically ask god for his spiritual grace please pray please pray come breathe upon me bread of god Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord, as I lift my hands in surrender to your will. 
hello lord i'm yielding to your spirit i'm walking in your love jesus i adore jesus i adore jesus i adore your holy name ask him Bread upon me, bread of God, bread upon me, Spirit of the Lord. The heavens are open as I lift my hands in surrender to the wind. Oh Lord, I am yielding to your Spirit. I'm working in your love, Jesus, I adore, Jesus, I adore, Jesus, I adore, Emmanuel. God is with us and he shall reign and he shall reign he shall reign forever omnipotent father of mercy and grace Thou art welcome in this. I'm giving you a little more time to prepare your heart to receive. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Some of you experience a cycle. There are times when you have enough. And then there are times when it looks like there is nothing. As though God is not faithful. Can I bring you by the help of the grace of God. To a place of consistent abundance. Consistent abundance. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. That grace that was at work in Abraham, in Isaac and in Jacob. That wherever they went they prospered. That grace that breaks every limitation around you financially. Let it rest upon your life today. Let it rest upon your business today. Let it rest upon your hands today. In the name, help them, help them. In the name of Jesus. There are four people, your hands will begin to burn. That's the grace for money. That's the grace for money. Financial resources. That four of you. Your hands will literally be on fire. You can't help yourself. It's a grace for financial resources. You will handle money. You will conquer money. I'm still on finances. I want to pray for you for the grace to give. Lift your hands. That grace, just bring it down a little bit. Let me tell you the truth. In the north, they don't give. Let me tell you. And until the north learns that secret, the prosperity of the northern church in Nigeria, quote me anywhere, I'm speaking as one whom God has given authority by mercy. The prosperity of the northern church in Nigeria is tied around faithful obedience to giving and to honoring the servants that God has raised. Otherwise, the north will continually be a training camp where God will bring people, train them, and send them elsewhere. If the northern church, quote me anywhere, put it online, bloggers can say whatever. I have studied, this is 10 years in Meduguri, I've studied the, northern, the, the, the spiritual scope of this north. If the church does not learn it, forget about it. 
there is a grace to give sir i know it i know it there is a grace to give a portion to seven and also to eight there is a grace to give consistently there's a grace to live a sacrificial life with ease there's a grace for you forget about any other teaching this prosperity thing but apply all the other laws if you have not understood and covenanted yourself to the law of giving forget it i'm talking about a time will come where no matter the economy you just keep thriving i may not have cars to show for it but you don't worry those things god has told me that i won't buy them it will come that's the covenant he has with me you will be here in this city i'm saying it now not to boast but i'm saying it so that you'll be witnesses you'll be here they will be sending cars from other states from other nations for me all of you will be here you will see it then you will now prove what i'm telling you now i want to pray for that grace to rest on your life listen god told me something in 2019 god said your ability to hold in the kingdom is in your ability to let go of you know they say to have and to hold your ability to have and to hold is in your ability to lay down and to give up anything you can't give you can't hold anything you cannot give you can't conquer you know that you have conquered something the bible says we know that we have passed from death to life when we love the brethren how do we love the brethren it said that whoever has the goods of this world will not shut his heart when his brother has need of it can i pray that grace upon your life there is nothing i can't give up there's nothing that god has not asked in fact there are things by the privilege of god's mercy there are things that i've not bought for myself that i've given to people if i share it here some of you will leave this place lift your hands that grace to give and in giving you conquer resources in giving you conquer self in giving you conquer any attachment to the flesh let it rest upon your life right now let it rest upon your life now in the name of jesus christ that from today because of your open-handedness god will commit and entrust kingdom projects to you god will entrust territorial projects to you god will take the dream of ten men and put it in your hand because of your faithfulness in stewarding divine resources Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Because of this thing, something will happen between now and this year. The year end of this year. Hold on. <laughs> something, God will make a statement with this ministry. Something will happen. I won't say it, but something is about to happen this year. That will shock this territory. Trust me, I won't tell anybody. Something is about to happen. When your hands are open god will take kingdom projects and entrust it in your hand god can take his dream for a city and give it to you you need to be able to detach yourself from things now i want to pray and release the prophetic lift your hands father anyone here that desires the seeing eyes i pray that you anoint them yourself right now that's it anoint them yourself right now anoint their eyes to see now let their eyes open in the name of jesus let their eyes open in the name of jesus let their eyes open in the name of jesus let their eyes open in the name of jesus, name of jesus. the grace to hear to hear in the spirit to hear the instructions of the spirit the hearing ear belongs to the lord i declare let your ears be open right now let your ears be open now let your ears be open now in the name of jesus the grace that makes you understand atmospheres spiritual atmospheres anywhere you enter you can discern the atmosphere in that place i want to release that grace upon you let that discerning ability rest upon you 
whether it is a demonic atmosphere it is divine whatever it is you will enter a place you will discern the atmosphere that is in that place receive that grace in the name of jesus christ again there is a grace to shift atmospheres you can discern an atmosphere but you may not be able to shift it let me tell you something with all humility jonathan lagang is not a preacher he's an atmosphere shifter when god appeared to me he said i've made you light that was all and he submerged me in that light it means that it's not about what i preach it's about the atmosphere that is able to change when this grace rests upon you you can change the spiritual climate over your family do you know why there is drought in a particular place at a time it is because of the climate over that place the moment you begin to have change in weather they will say climate change isn't it climate change rain is falling in april and you know rain doesn't fall till june they call it climate change there also can be spiritual climate change some of you need the climate over your families to change some of you that come from families of idol worship and idolatry families where people struggle for everything it's as if there is a lead covering the destinies of men i come as an apostle of the most high god the grace to shift atmospheres the grace to change spiritual climate receive that grace in the name of jesus go and change the atmosphere over your life over your family over your workspace go and shift atmospheres as a music minister change the atmosphere in any meeting in the name of jesus there is a grace that compels men to listen to you he said i will give you a wisdom and a mouth which your adversaries will not be able to gain say it doesn't matter your academic qualification when you speak people cannot deny what you say i want to put that grace on your life lift your hands whether you are a businessman you are a marketer you are a professional you are a music minister you are a minister of the word you need that grace it is by your words you command influence it is your words that transport possibilities into your life the grace that gives you a mouth that is accepted anywhere and everywhere by foes and friends and enemies alike let that grace rest upon your life right now let that grace rest upon your life now in the name of jesus Christ. finally because of time let me pray the prayer of favor listen before i pray it's not about falling down what i'm telling you is what i've experienced it's not a lie forget about you you don't be don't don't be too long with me that you don't know me i wanted to say you don't know me but it will sound like pride but don't be too long you don't you you guys you've not seen anything yet i know favor i know it not because of what i've experienced god has brought me to the point where it reflects on the life of people anyone that is genuinely connected to this grace you must find favor at work one way or the other laws must be bent for you that's why your connection matters i'm telling you the truth there are things god has given me there are doors he has opened that i i didn't even call for them it's the favor of god can i pray it upon your life let this grace bring an end to struggle i'm about to release it for you you want to bring an end to struggle in your life always trying to force things to happen no no there's a grace that can compel people to stand and make a covenant to help you there's a grace that will force people who are above you on every ramification to turn and become your servant years ago i used to quote that scripture in isaiah chapter 60 he said the sons of foreigners shall build your walls and their kings will minister to you i used to quote it and pray it is two years ago that i began to see it in my life god has raised people who are above me in every ramification they turn themselves to my sons and serve me i'm telling you let me pray that grace upon your life lift your hands 
I don't care your background. I don't care the family you come from. That days are gates in the spirit. You know, it's not just about a day. The day is already ending in a few hours. But the day is giving us access to another dimension. May the favor of God mantle your life from today. May the favor of God mantle your life from today. May the favor of God change the status quo around your life from today. Every season of struggle is over from today. It's over from today. It's over from today. In Jesus' name. Wave your hands and give him praise. Wave your hands and give him praise.